Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Nace Star League Overwatch. It's been a little bit of time now. I hope you missed us. I surely did miss this broadcast. We got a couple of amazing games up tonight, and to break it all down, of course, is myself and LaFon. Good to see you back here, man. It's been a while. Yeah. It has been a while, even longer than it has been for you. So excited to get into the games tonight uh, as we get set to go underway in just a moment. And before we get into those games, we first got to talk about Ground News. Ground News is home to over 180,000 mindful news readers who use their industry first coverage analysis tool to adopt a balanced news diet. The Ground News community is home to people from across the political spectrum. No small feat in an increasingly divided world. Here at Nace Star League, we want you to be part of this community, too. Check out Ground News online or download the app available on Google Play and the App Store. But thank you so much, Ground News. But we got to talk about our first matchup now and ground ourselves before the excitement is too much. Today, we got NYU versus Drexel, LaFon. This is going to be an exciting one. It is. I think Drexel University here, we're seeing that 4-1 records between the two squads, right? Equal in map score. But for Drexel, that's a bit of a story untold because they actually lost to Harrisburg University in that one loss, a team that we thought would be at the very top of this division. So for Drexel, they're still fighting for that second place, trying to get into playoffs here. Uh, NYU, if they can get a victory over uh, Drexel University, that would be a big statement game um, and, and one that could really tell uh, you know, uh, a lot towards the end of the bracket space. So uh, a, a lot on the line here for NYU, I think, to keep themselves in the hunt uh, for that postseason burn. Yeah, without a doubt, we have seen NYU perform earlier in this season. They swept New Haven pretty nicely, 3 nothing, And there was a little bit of shaky performances, I have to say, as we saw in Eichenwald. They need to shore up their defenses. That's something I've noticed throughout that last series. But I think that this is going to be a good one. It's a fight for second place. Whoever wins this one is definitely going to have a cut above the rest. But, you know, we got to get back to this. We got to get into yeah. this game. And I think we're kicking things off, of course. I mean, where else, LaFon? It's going to be Li Zhang Tao. Yeah, set your clock by it because that's where we're going to map number one always in the Nace Star League. We've only had it happen a couple of times to the contrary. So definitely a, not an unexpected showing in its face. Uh, the one thing, you know, of course, we talked, we sort of touched on the Harrisburg thing for, for Drexel University, but, um, you know, they need to come out swinging. They really do because, again, we have, from what we saw their performance against Harrisburg, again, a team that we think are going to be towards the top end of the bracket. Remember, last season, they were in that sort of top place in the playoffs. So uh, a lot of expectations were on their shoulders just for Drexel, this needs to be a performance where against Harrisburg, they had a couple of close maps, even if it was a 3-0. So that may be something that they can kind of take uh, credit or uh, take uh, inspiration from here towards this uh, this match. So that might not be a good one, but let's get things started. Let's get it popping over here on Li Jiang Tower. The, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one because from Drexel University, we saw the last time they were on stream, a very um, meth uh, methodical, uh, way of approaching their composition, which is a very high tempo one to begin with, right? Plays very quickly, um, very much based around setting up the, the wrecking ball for success and then having your DPS kind of get control, usually the Tracer. We're seeing this uh, Symmetra early. This is going to be a teleport out of spawn into the Tracer. Love is Rage is also going to do the same thing. And we are underway. There's the teleports. There's the switches back and forth. And Drexel University and New York University try and duel each other out here in the middle area of Li Zhang Tower. Looking for Swift here to have some great hacks, especially boot potential. Doesn't make a good connection. Optimal shot, not living up to the name in that moment, but there's still plenty of game for them to make it up. And here comes the initial brawl, starting off with Wolger. They've got Isaac caught off, and that will be the first one. Eeyore, she goes down as well, and it's full on aggression. Wolger does get a little bit cocky, but they have to back off and save themselves. Yeah, it's still, I mean, pest control is the fastest one back, and there it is, the fastest way back, too, with the Resurrect. Love is Rage here on the flank, just trying to put a little bit more pressure, not to let the full setup come through, but NYU was going to have to get the reset in. A very aggressive positioning by the Tracer here on New York University. Still, that being said, the hack is not going to mean an em elimination, and Drexel University are in control at this point. Oh! Oh! Optimal shot! What a great boop! <laughs> that was nice, but we got to be careful now because it, the fight isn't over. Just, yeah, optimal shot, taking some serious damage, and they will be the first one to fall in the secondary fight. Love is Rage isn't out of the woods yet, but they do have the Pulse Bomb at the ready. They're going in for another swing round. Here's the resurrection for optimal shot, but that will slow things down a bit here for NYU as the Rocket Barrage comes through, DMX, and destroys Isaac. 
big play there uh, for Drexel University to contest it so they don't end, lose any members. The EMP, sorry, the hack onto the uh, Wrecking Ball, trying to just get that elimination, but it's just too few players to stay uh, stabilized here for NYU when Drexel will commit to that 50% mark in counting. NYU has their best opportunity to victory here. Both supports have their ultimates online, and you've got the EMP as well. Peanut going to have to play quick here to survive and dodge that and keep their team alive. But really, Swift 16 has the best opportunity for giving New York University their first control percentage here. These players being harassed at the moment. They can't even leave their side of it. Optimal shot going in and finds two. Both of the healers, they have fallen, and there is no support if they want to continue this attack onto it. Oh, keep Optimal shot going. Another falls. Isaac has no chance of even joining the rest of their team. Yeah, it's going to be a full reset here, and you have one fight left if you're NYU. The one thing is that you still have um, the uh, Transcendence available while Peanut used theirs. So um, perhaps the opportunity exists for Swift 16 to find that to EMP, but it really has to be a massive one, and they need someone to touch the objective. Swift. You've been talking about Swift this whole time, and it might be time. Here's the EMP locking down Peanut. That's going to be huge. No one there to heal him up. CB going down as well. However, Optimal Shot is still in the fight, and Optimal Shot gives him a chance along with that self destruction. Bonesaw, Eeyore, removed from play, and this is still under Drexel's control. Now, Claire uses the Transcendence at this particular end, so now with the hack onto Jeff Goldblum, the point is controlled by NYU. The eliminations are coming through, and that's going to be the end of the fight. It was messy and it was slow, but they get there at the very end, and now NYU, uh, you know, faced their long, uh, arduous effort to return to full control. Their one saving grace, I suppose, if there is one, is that uh, Drexel University commits nearly everything in that last engagement, right? They don't have anything to uh, play through here, and so NYU can go for a self-destruct or a pulse bomb to kind of delay time. But again, these fights have to be won out cleanly by NYU if they want a chance to return in this first round. You see that bone saw is feeling the pressure out there from pet control and they have to back off well, a lot of fighting going down in the side room love is rage backing off along with swift they have to stay away from those tanks it will be claire the first one she's going down and maybe that won't be enough but optimal shot as well as bone saw they're just knocking people off left and right but well, the fight is returning back to the objective itself and love is rage is making them feel their rage with a couple of nice one clips in a melee uh, that stick onto Optimal Shot was sick, though, from Love is Rage. It may not be enough, as the eliminations are there. Wolgar is back on the point to contest. The hack will keep things in favor for the moment, and that is actually a massive play. Fastest Control knocks out the e uh, sorry the Rally, so sustain is a problem here for NYU, and they're losing members. The contest is on the objective, close, but they're running out of time. Swift back with another EMP, looking for a secondary shot. Both the healers are down, and Swift saves themselves with the Translocator of play that's got them out of there multiple times optimal shot can't get the shot through it's blocked by the uh defense matrix but that won't be enough jeff goldblum getting shot out and it still seems to be under nyu's control this is actually a spectacular turnaround from nyu the wave goodbye there's the melee as well and that's gonna be round number one going to nyu a turnaround in the most Massive of efforts there, and that is a huge team play by New York University as Drexel drop round number one in surprising fashion, in my opinion. That was a great effort by a lot all of those players combined. I want to mostly point to Love is Rage and Swift, their ability to get in and get out using the yeah. translocator, using the recall, just having the ability to keep Drexel their heads on a swivel force yeah. them to think twice about any engagement they take because someone is always going to be behind them i think the other thing to highlight too is that new york university um they don't really have an opportunity to keep their backline safe but their supporters are doing a good job of dueling long enough to make the fights extend when the point is under their control so something to keep an eye out there drexel need to be a little bit quicker on those backline assassinations as claire and eeyore have stayed alive for a lot longer than they arguably should have been we're going to see similar compositions returning here as uh, new york and drexel uh start off an early a lot of spam from new uh, from drexel to put new york university in the back foot though shot putting the pressure on as they're stuck in that back room this will keep a good amount of charge vulgar in a bad position now but they have the heals they will stay safe that is a lot of damage coming out of bone saw 
This is such a, a interesting a split up setup right now. The first one to fall though will be pest control. And that should signal another player to follow through, but it will be a resurrection. However, the trade-off is Seabee goes down instead. Yeah, and I mean, this is a trade that you get the Mercy out. So now the heals are particularly lacking. It's just Peanut who doesn't have the Transcendence quite yet. And more critically, the point is under control by Drexel. So New York University in a lot of control of the space here. You can see Jeff Goldblum just making sure that uh, Pest Control stays alive out of spawn. Because that would have been a very dangerous 5v6 to re-enter it. Well, there goes another one. Instead of Pest Control, they got to worry about Peanut falling. And that will signal another one. It's all of his rage right now. Fighting against so many players. Somehow staying alive. They have the Pulse Bomb. Should be interesting if they can land it onto somebody. There it goes, but no one is hit. That was a uh, that is a, a cocky play for sure. Levy's rage saw the recall coming up. He's like, I can I can trace her death here. It's gonna whiff, but you just know that in the mental space, New York University are feeling confident in this map. Good reason. How many times are players picked off on the side of Drexel? Jeff Goldblum about to go down as well. There's the D mech. There's the follow up, and it's a whip shot to send him into hell. Yeah, Claire does a great job. She uh, gets the downrange elimination onto both the Zen and the Tracer. Optimal Shot can make a switch now. It's going to be a mirror composition. The Sombra getting a lot of value, and I think critically here, it's going to be the EMP duel yet again. So Swift versus Peanut, eyes on as they set up for this EMP. This is looking to be a good one. However, Swift doesn't get it off. They've been hacked. Optimal Shot still somehow the first one to die. I don't know how Swift was able to make it out of there, but they're going back in for the fight with the EMP ready, but it doesn't matter. They're taking it all the way back to the spawn. If they're gonna commit this right outside their doorsteps, that's gonna be ridiculous. No, they, they see the reset coming. Pass control's gonna go over to the Widowmaker, trying to just eliminate someone who's too aggressively forward. Uh, no one keeps their head open long enough, so you see the uh, return to Tracer. Big hack, I think, onto uh, Love is Rage, so that's down one. But it's final fight here as New York University up to 95%. Bulgar starts things off with a minefield, looking to maintain control. You don't want to swing right into that one. If you're bone saw, as they didn't do the pile driver, smart thinking on their part, but they still have a whole lot to overcome. They are almost dead. Somehow make it away. That's insane. That is actually a massive survivability thing there, because not only that, New York University have lost their, uh, sorry, have eliminated the Brigitte, so NYU are in control again. It's insane how well they're maintaining their lives, maintaining takes but Claire she's starting things off with the transcendence and they have to eliminate this player in the back line peanut the first one to fall make that two more following it and this should be an easy conversion they have overtime now someone needs to touch they have two players on there for the contest pest control might lose their lives right now but we've got to focus back to the objective and there it is being cleared out the tanks are there to stop anyone from walking in but Wolgar doesn't care Wolgar gets onto the objective but they have the discord orb they have the EMP and there's nothing they could do to win this one out no, and this is going to be map number one going over to NYU, who are dominant on that second round. After that 99 flip on round one, it was all NYU. And uh, this is a very, very aggressive look from a team that we had a couple of doubts about, but are looking very strong after map number one. Yeah, let's take this play from Flair here. Really a, a solid one, just using the Zen orbs, providing so much value along with that Discord, and to save themselves with the Transcendence. Great play by these players, and I'm excited to see what uh what they're gonna bring next. I was a little I was a little concerned at the start of the map. Uh, Eor and Claire were both getting uh you know taken out in the back line very swiftly by you know the Fara by Optimal Shots uh, duo in the skybox. So um, there was an adaptation about midway through. They played uh, the supports a lot more passively. Um, on on that first sub map, and then um, you know once they were able to gain control of the objective and sort of a uh, break line of sight from the Fara, then it became a lot easier for the supports to kind of set up. And uh, and then round number two, they just completely controlled the tempo of play, not allowing anyone on the objective. So um, I, I mean, Claire and Eor uh, showed up in a big way, especially after the weaker start to the map. So impressive stuff there from uh, NYU. And this is really a game now on our hands. I had some concerns coming in that Drexel would have had the opportunity. And I thought, you know, after the first half of that first sub map that it was very much going to be put to uh, to the test. But no, NYU is right back at it. And Los, this is um, a, a very contested map uh, and series as a result. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I'm very pleased with what I saw coming out from NYU. Great improvement based off of what I saw in their game against New Haven. And it's also interesting to point out that 
yeah. player was a DPS player in that previous series, swapping over to the Zenyatta in the, the support role. It's an interesting adjustment, and I think it's panning out quite nicely for them. There, yeah, this is now something, you know, uh, I think obviously mechanics we saw there from the Zen player, uh, the five orb coming in with the alt fire several times on night market to give themselves the advantage. So uh, certainly NYU making a change that was, uh, you know, we, we don't obviously have the insight into the inner workings of the squad, but one that at least early off has put paid, uh, uh, put paid to their, to their selection. So good stuff from NYU. And I think another thing is that Drexel had a chance when they adjusted their composition to try and yeah. mirror what NYU was bringing to the table on Night Market, but it was just too late. They didn't have yeah. the EMP charges. They didn't have Sombra ready in position to get those hacks that they were looking for. It was while they were already on the back foot that they made that change. Yeah, it took too long. Um, and I think even on, on map number one, the Pharah was working for so long that they kind of got stuck in it as well. And then the fight just never really went back in their favor. Farah is really good at defending. Re-attacking on control with the Farah is hard to do because you have to go through the choke points and then up in the air. We saw how well, you know, uh, I mean, especially Love is Rage setting up with the, with the Tracer um, to, to deny those early choke points. So good stuff, I think, from the adaptation from NYU and from Drexel. We're going to need to see a quicker switch if things are just getting shut out. Um, it, it took way too long for them. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be fast, you have to be adaptable if you want to survive, if you want to fight for that second place spot, if you want to earn that second place spot and be yeah. a cut above the rest of this conference, you need to be quick in your game, in your thinking, and in your team adjustments. That's what's most important overall. You could take time to group up as a squad, but if you can't have that quick thinking in terms of adjusting to a plan, executing a new strategy, that's what's going to matter the most. Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of adjustments, though, we're making no adjustments to the map pool, uh, the the handshake map pool, if you will, as we got Lijiang Tower for map number one, map number two, King's Row. <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, to the adjustments in game, yes, absolutely. But apparently the teams don't believe in uh, in different maps at all. So uh, a, a lot. Uh, I, I, on the other hand, though, Lijiang Tower does play significantly differently than King's Row does in terms of style. I doubt we'll see as much Wrecking Ball. Uh, so perhaps, you know, Drexel can bring it back on a, on a map type that uh, favors Brawl a little bit more. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the uh, off tank coming out of, I believe, uh, both Bonesaw and Isaac. I want to know what they're going to bring to the table. We have yeah. seen some good poke composition, I believe, out of NYU. I'm not sure they're going to be bringing that just yet. Maybe to start things off, have some higher angles, long range to provide some extra cover for their tanks, provide some fear and do a lot of chip damage before they could even get through the first choke point. But I yeah. think you're going to be right that we are looking toward more of a, a brawl composition, you know, classic. The interesting thing, yeah, we did, we've seen, uh, you know, obviously the tanks haven't really changed a whole lot. It was Wrecking Ball Diva. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see, we saw, you know, the Sigma being hovered on a little bit on Night Market, but it never really got uh, uh, brought out. So the the interesting thing is going to be how the team plays around a different style if they do go to a different style right the um the element of perhaps the the reinhardt or or or, or the uh the sigma in play i doubt we're going to go much more than that if anything else it'll be you know the the diva coming back um but uh getting set i'm, I'm excited to see how this thing kind of or how it kind of changes up as we get forward of course yeah we got to look back it was very strong takes very strong uh control flips we saw coming out from NYU. So if they bring that same intensity, that energy, then I would would not be surprised if their attack is going to be solid. But we got to look at Drexel first, as they are the ones who will be making that assault, making that attack. Or actually, no, they're on the defense. My mistake. Yeah. So uh, I mean, right off the rip, we're seeing that double shield come into play, which is, uh, I mean, we hinted at it, or at least you hinted at it um, at, at the uh, at the outset of this map, but. Um, you're, we're seeing a lot more desire to slow the game down um, in, in this regard, right? The, the, the pocket echo, or even you can apply that to the ash as well. And then Claire can, you know, set up uh, the, the Baptiste with the frontline healing um, in great effort. Wolgar still on the wrecking ball, so trying to create, you know, harassment in the background. There's no stuns uh, aside from the accretion uh, from Bonesaw. So Wolgar should have a little bit more success than they did in map number one um, against the, uh, the Sombra. Yeah, <laughs> I like how the second the doors opened, there was so much resistance coming out of it. But now this should be the beginning of the fight. They use that Sigma barrier. Whoa, a nice little halt there from Isaac. Good way to get some damage in, but they will be all set up by the time they get around the corner. But we got to peep pest control, who the second they show their face, they are meeting massive resistance. 
Yeah, I think it's the other way around because it's pest control who's trying to be the irritant here. Uh, the tracer is trying to get value. Great sticky bombs to set things up, and that's going to mean the Fuchs team beam applies a ton of damage. And NYU are now in control as the shielding has gone down. Both tanks sent to the respawn queue low, so this is going to be the end of the fight right off the rip. Oh yeah, starting things off, you send out that immortality field. Peanut just looking to save their lives for a little bit, but it won't be earned. Pest Control doing a little tour of King's Row right now. I guess looking for some long range, longer angles, I don't know, a longer play, waiting for the reset from their squad. Yeah, trying to get to the high ground here is important because you're going to be able to like put pressure and maybe force the uh, immortality field early, give Wolgar the opportunity to get that high ground control. NYU, though, unassailed. And I mean, the duplicate online for Swift should mean that halfway through this fight, um, there's going to be a lot of pressure in the DPS department. Swift barely getting away, but here's Pest Control jumping out of the window. Will recall and goes in for the re aggression. It's not enough to take down Eeyore. She does make it out alive, but here is the duplication out of Swift. It's the Wrecking Ball. They're swinging through. The amplification is already out, but no one is there to take advantage. The damage won't be done. Blocked in a corner with the minefield. Jeff Goldblum doesn't have a chance. No, this is going to be a disaster. And Swift 16 staying alive. There is the duplicate ending. We'll get the sticky bombs, but uh, that is not enough. CB will get back in control. So the respawns are going to be important here. Which ones return quicker? And I think at this point, Drexel should have the War of Attrition on their favor. Um, as Bonesaw trying to get to that high ground. Two ticks given over. Oh yeah, they are fighting for their life. They can't go for the contest. Bonesaw, however, still in this. They've stalled enough to allow the rest of the team to come back. Here's the Gravitic Flux, knocking only one player up, but they're gonna launch out the Dragon Strike in the middle of the sky, and it's actually huge. There's four down for New York University, and they are certainly out of control at this point. The absolute confidence by Optimal Shot that their support will be there to save them is spectacular. Uh, and that's going to mean that the point will unlock. That being said, not a terrible start to the defense for NYU um, as they now try and set up for this control phase of the second part of the map. Some switches going in as Love's Rage goes over to the Cassidy. Uh, they want a little bit more control on the uh, uh, on, on the Wrecking Ball and on Tracer here, especially with the stun. Um, and of course, Swift 16 going over to the Hanzo here, trying to just, again, more damage throughput, just a little bit more pressure on the front line as a result. Swift was doing a good job at harassing the enemies and being hard to kill by flying around, but they need a front line. They do need that forward-facing damage, like you said. And we have Jeff, Jeff Goldblum with the Gravitic Flux picking up four. One dies before they land, but it's another immortality field that keeps them in the game. Only one damage. Here comes the Deadeye. It finds that one kill onto the Wrecking Ball, but now they're continuing to make their advance. There's one down only because they have that bongo. They have the damage coming through. Drexel University still pushing on, though. They have an ultimate at the ready. Amplification Matrix is up, but they've all backed off as NYU is here to fight. The Dragon Strike is online here from Optimal Shot, and he's going to commit it. They want to get this one right back in their favor, and with nowhere to retreat to, that is going to be the remaining members taken down as uh, Drexel University, they grind out that objective, and they're going to get the second point capture here. Um, that was close, but uh, in, in confidence of their victory, Drexel University returned to it, and now NYU have to play a very strong third. Um, Swift gonna get the last second contest to take a little bit more time off the clock, but again, that's more mostly a, a, a last ditch effort than any real attempt at defense. And uh, NYU, now this next fight should be theirs. Test control can end things with a good pulse bomb, but it, it, it's, it's a lot to ask of one player. Here you have the uh, Gravitic Blocks and both uh, support ultimates brought into the force. Okay, Pulse Bomb takes out the Mortality Field, but not too much after that when Optimal Shot goes down. Here's Bone Cells, Gravitic Flux, landing right back into the Immortality Field, but damage is still done. And that will be NYU's fight to win. Yeah, it's the, I mean, you draw it up exactly as it should be, and the rally survivability is just too good. With Pest Control whiffing on the Pulse Bomb, and even if it had landed, um, the Immortality Field was there to defend against it. Uh, NYU just had too much health. So, Drexel University now in this third phase, where it's a lot harder to sort of force the fight, are going to make a change to mirror out the tank line. And uh, uh, again, this should be a duel of the support ultimates again. Oh, I love the anticipation of that amplification matrix. We saw Claire think about it, and she put it through. And that was an immediate change of decision coming out of Drexel University. They had to back off. We're going in for potentially a secondary fight. 
this is going to be now the dragon strike yet again as a zoning utility but i mean optimal shot taken out before they can use it and so this has gotten from bad to worse tanks are down here for new york university only three left alive make that two they have to back off it's just swift and eeyore and they won't be able to do too much without the rest of their squad a couple of ultimates though they're ready for either side so it's it's going to be the cart moving forward. So it's going to favor Drexel just the slightest bit as the respawns come in. Love is Rage going over to the insta kill hit scan potential of the Widowmaker. A lot on their shoulders, especially against Double Shield. They might have gotten one. No, right at the moment they could have got the kill. CB activated the transcendence. No one can get any damage in. A Gravitic Flux against NYU. Throws two of them into the sky, but they land safely into that immortality field. But it doesn't matter. All of the defenders, most of them are all dead. There's no shields. Nothing can protect them. The immortality field is dropped on the payload. And it lets them safely ride it into the sunset. Or maybe, no, it won't. Here's Love is Rage back again with the Tracer. Trying to stall out time. CP falls. Now it's a spin to win. But Bonesaw has been cut off. It's more four more stalling here from nyu if they can get down below that a uh, minute mark this could be a very very different state, state of opinion but things are going pretty well for them as they get another elimination that's insane swift staying alive they have to live they have to survive this one bone saws in the back line looking for some help optimal shot sends through the dragon strike and no one can stay to contest but they will for a moment point 13 meters to go and it has to go the way of drexel five seconds it was so close for new york university to force that less than a minute timer but drexel they're able to survive long enough still a remarkable contest from new york university to give the just to take a minute five off the clock when well, that was a near two minute time bank a 45 uh second plus uh stall from new york university at the very end it isn't quite enough to force the issue they will still need to uh, complete the map with time remaining but i mean from a defensive effort heroic heroic indeed from nyu yeah i wasn't expecting them to come through with that one uh great job by them great job adjusting to that looking for the last minute scramble and scrap time and they earned it they did a yeah. excellent way of burning that time let's see if they can earn more on their attack yeah, uh, I mean, I want to highlight Optimal Shot a little bit because I think uh, he's been an, uh, a highlight for this team, for Drexel, um, in many ways on this Hanzo. The, uh, the Dragon Strike has been one of the difference makers uh, for, for their team. I think every fight where the Dragon Strike was used that aggressively, it won out the fight. Um, first, second, and third, in fact. So, um, you know, uh, a really great job by the, by the Hanzo player for Drexel, who has been um, perhaps the most threatening player uh, for for this uh, hey, squad, uh, the red it. squad. I gotta agree with you. It was a great play uh, halfway to the second objective where Drexel pulled back and it was almost a bait for NYU as they walked right into a, a slow or small alleyway where they dropped the dragon strike and earned that second objective. So, absolutely right. Impact player for sure, but let's see how much impact they can have. Oh, dynamite right behind the barrier might catch fire, but. It will stay safe for now. A lot of spam and Drexel staying back, but they got to watch out for Bonesaw on the flank. Yeah, interesting stuff is that we're seeing this uh, Wrecking Ball offense into a double shield defense yet again. So um, these teams really do believe in that ability of the Wrecking Ball to put pressure. Great headshot, but the Dynamite will need that Pest Control can't really force the issue as uh, Pest Control's Dynamite misses their time. Ooh, almost another shot, but look at Bonesaw in the back line being such a nuisance, stopping pest control from having the value that they're looking for, continuously disrupting their shots. But you gotta look at the fight down here. Love is Rage sending in so many shots through that bottom line, forces out the immortality field. Jeff Goldblum somehow dies. I don't know what happened there. Might have been too close to his own shot. Bonesaw going into the back line. The tanks are done, and basically everyone is done on the side of Drexel, though. That is a really big start from uh, New York University, right? The poke, the nonstop irritation from uh, Bonesaw on the back line, the Wrecking Ball just making life a miserable experience for Drexel. What that opens up is a lot of the resources have to be committed. Um, and with that, uh, New York University roll in, pun intended, to get the cleanup crew. And uh, Drexel just run out of, you know, run out of resources at the very end. Um, New York should have the opportunity now to roll this cart aggressively through. The Bob is online. They'll have the Dragon Strike as well for zoning. And the tanks are not too far away from their impact utility as well. Just look how far up these players are. It looks like they're contesting for the third objective at this point. 
Ooh, big saw. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, everyone looked at Bone Saw there, and I don't care if you have a thousand HP or not, you're not going to survive. So, uh, back to uh, a reset. You're going to be able to walk back in, and you can see uh, New York University showing a little bit of respect here to the fact that it's a 5v6. Swift has the Dragon Strike. Expecting them when they swing around. This could be it, or at least to start it up, initiate the fight. I'm waiting for it, Swift. Where is it? But it's gonna start off with Bob going through and followed up. Here is the Dragon Strike taking down one. Their shields aren't in position. Isaac on the cross angle, getting the spam from the side. No one's checking out. And with the support of that transcendence, it's an easy cleanup for NYU. Uh, yeah, that should be an easy cleanup for NYU. That's five ultimates. Uh, they used everything that they started that fight with. So uh, the only one who hasn't used their Q button is Bonesaw. Um, that's a fight where, you know, there's there's not much to say beyond the team all press Q in cohesion and everyone fell over. Drexel um, are okay with how that fight went simply because of how much NYU used. Now we're on even fighting ground on this third phase as Wolgar will go over to the Wrecking Ball as well. And Optimal Shots Junkrat is perhaps a little more unorthodox, but definitely the traps can make Bonesaw have to think twice about rolling into the back line. They're about to roll out. Actually packing off as they will be contested and challenged by Wolgar. They have to return to the safety of their team. Pest Control looking for some decent shots on the sideline. Now they have to focus on defending this payload or stopping the payload rather. Starting things off with Pest Control going down. Losing out on the DPS is going to be huge but Bob will fall as well. Now it should look to be even at this point. Pest Control swapping over to the Trace but let's look at the minefield in the back line. Jeff Colbloom can't activate the Gravitic Flux, they get stunned, and Bonesaw is trapping the healer. Peanut somehow survives, but it's a cleanup here for NYU. The minefield is so massive, it takes down three. And that is going to be a four minute, 14 time bank to just a minute five. Drexel University on the back foot yet again. And this, of course, is a fight that I'm much more impressed by, by New York University. Again, they entered that third phase with only one ultimate, that being the minefield, and swiftly were able to bring back just enough to close that round out. On top of all of that, a big accretion to stun out uh, the Jeff Goldblum's uh, a Gravitic Flux. So uh, so Isaac stepping up in a big way as well in New York University. Um, the end of the second was a fight they should have won, and they did. The end of the third uh, phase was a fight that um, was a little bit more contested, and yet immediately they were in full control of the objective. And so that is a much more impressive fight to me. Yeah, and I wasn't expecting so much value to come out of Bonesaw's uh, minefield. I didn't think that was going to happen. It seemed to be placed way early in the fight, way early in the engagement. But as players were backing off on the side of Drexel, I don't guess they must have been lost in the confusion or being knocked around by Isaac. That They just got lost in it. They got destroyed. Three players went down from that one. Yeah. Something to highlight also is that New York University's tanks are getting perhaps a head start on practicing for... Uh... Overwatch 2 is they haven't really had a main and off tank look. Bonesaw has played the Wrecking Ball, but has also played the Sigma. Obviously, Isaac has played the Sigma as well, and now on the uh, Arisa. So, uh, a lot of flexibility from this front line of New York University. I'm enjoying it. That's exactly what I, I had complained about not having the flexibility, not adjusting earlier in the map, but they've been adjusting the entire time across the map. They're finding so much success with it. Yeah, and I mean, now 48 seconds left for Drexel. Again, they have to get progress. 4 minute 14 uh, is a lot of time to assail one third of the objective. So Drexel needs progress if they want to uh, get themselves a map back again. NYU up one nothing here in this series. Two players postured for a flank, but none of them can actually execute on it. Coming from the sideline, the side alley optimal shot, looking to put some chunks into that shield, but they can't do it. The spam is too much against them for them to even show their face. Now it's time for a drop down onto the objective. Jeff Goldblum sending them some spam. They haven't started anything off except Optimal Shot removes player from play with a good headshot. Yeah, that being said, Optimal Shot is returned, and that's going to mean the Resurrect is in play. So this is actually disastrous for Drexel in the final moment. Seven seconds on the clock. Seven seconds on the clock, and they haven't even stepped foot onto the objective. They're being denied absolutely. Love is Rage with the great damage, the great shots as well being followed up. They will have a bit of contest in the form of Pest Control zipped onto the objective but it was never enough new york university win map two you're on king's row oh my god no it, it no. certainly feels like an inevitable oh my god i thought that was the end of it <laughs> <laughs> it certainly does feel like an inevitability though los i have to agree with you 414 to take that third first third of the objective again you get like 
uh, let's let's be incredibly uh, uh, conservative with their estimate and say um, you get a fight a minute half. You still get three fights um, with New York University's time bank, and they only have to again take one third of the objective. And they are in, it's impossible for them to lose this map, right? At worst, they can draw. So Drexel, you're gonna have to put up the fight of a lifetime if they want to uh, en enter into the break with uh, a scoreline that isn't uh, two nil down at match point. A lot on the table here, Drexel has to fight hard just for that, uh, you know, um, least worst case scenario. Going for the draw. It is going to be such a difficult task. Drexel University has so much to do, so much work to get done, so much focus they need to have going into this fight. 15 seconds before they have to go into four minutes and 14 seconds of pure unabated defense. Bit of a spread out composition right now. Peanut in the back line up top. And everyone not really playing together. I don't think they're looking for that brawl. They're trying to have a lot of spam coming through here. This first contest is going to spell uh, massive dividends for Drexel. If they can get a lot of resources on their side um, without giving any space out of so. It's a tough ask, but uh, what they kind of have to fight for. Again, Bone Saw in the back line. It's this time Isaac's being focused down tremendously, though as the Sigma player gets chunked down pretty massively. Gonna reset here. Great sticky bombs out from Optimal Shot. Swift almost falling down, but Optimal Shot taking some serious damage from that Dynamite as well. However, now it's time for NYU to move on through. Isaac still on the sideline. Will go down and be destroyed for that aggression. However, they have to turn their attention back to the front of the objective, or maybe above it, as Bonesaw is dropping down with the pile driver and helps take down two. They will have this objective now. Finally, I'm correct, not jumping the gun anymore. NYU wins map two. They put themselves at match point as a result, and that is a dominant offensive side for NYU, who suddenly look uh, like a team that is uh, one to be contended with in all senses of the word. Their defense was really good, and uh, even better, their offense has looked untouchable um, against Drexel University. So Drexel, not out of the series yet, but certainly have their work cut out for it. Without a doubt, and I think, you know, based off of what we saw in the series previously with them, they may bring it over to Havana, as we saw they... Uh, had that matchup against Harrisburg, but we got to keep it in this series. We got to keep it with NYU and Drexel. NYU, they're just looking dominant at this point. Yeah. I want to point out every single player. Every single player has had so much impact, but I do believe the, the tank lineup did have great efficacy in that yeah. second round on the attack where they stopped the Gravitic Flux. They put those landmines in placement to make sure nobody was able to retreat from that last fight. And also... On their defense in the first objective, you never saw, I believe it was Bonesaw or no. someone going from the back line. You never allowed a single player from Drexel to get to that high ground without making such a long rotation. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is that uh, it, it, it's less that, okay, so going back to that first 99% that they ticked over, right? It was the team that wasn't playing in coordination with each other. They really felt like they were off sync um, with their approach to, to the fight. One player would go in too early and there was just not enough support to follow them back. That has virtually disappeared um, in, in the latter half of the series. So um, certainly as a team as well, um, they're supporting that front line uh, and that's giving them a lot more space to work. And uh, I think across the board, uh, you know, you didn't want to mention every single player, but I think as a team, they've leveled up tremendously in the small amount we've seen them um, here today. So uh, definitely something to keep an eye out for if they can keep that going into map number three and uh, ideally for them at, the, at stopping it right there, but if necessary, even beyond. Yeah, and we got to think about the exact opposite over for Drexel. There have been moments where they were quite scattered. I would say in yeah. that first part of the objective, uh, we had multiple players in the back line looking for a pick, looking to have a pincer maneuver with the rest of their squad, but it would usually take too much time. It would eat into their bank, or by the time that the rest of Drexel was in position, either the Tracer or the Wrecking Ball, they weren't there. They were already yeah. found out. The rest of the squad was just facing too much damage for that flank to really matter. They're hoping to kind of claw it back again as we head into map number three. It's going to be Dorado as our, as our look here. And while you will be back on the defense here, they elected to go there uh, as a second time in a row. Expected, right? If you don't pick the map, you often pick the side. And the side, the correct side to pick is defense. 
Um, so NYU will be your team in blue yet again. And uh, no real changes defensively here from NYU, and I don't think you really need to. Perhaps the only adaptation is Eeyore on the uh, Brigitte rather than the uh, Mercy. So uh, a lot more stuns in potential here, um, but it's going to be a lot harder uh, for Love is Rage to duel the aerial threat if Optimal Shot actually goes out on the farm. I'm, I'm liking CB on the Ana, though. I'm liking this one. Okay. <laughs> Did they go for the uh, the aerial anti-nade and then switch? That's probably what happened. Um, so the, 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 the Mercy's almost a mandatory pick for Para. So far, it's starting off well as a lot of damage comes in, but has control taken out with a well timed headshot. Off of that stun, yet again, there's the Brig and the assist. So um, clearly the shield bash putting, uh, putting up uh, effort early shot under a lot of pressure but they will have to back off get those heals Ongsa, making sure no one is crossing this bridge they will have that completely under their control especially with the barrier but in the back line it is Wolgar. they remove love is rage this is a fight from the opposite side of the payload they got to be watching from all angles and bonesaw has to use that suck to keep themselves in the fight. Eeyore, she's running away. She's backing up. She doesn't have the assistance. Maybe she could fight it out. Maybe, but optimal shot in the sky is too much of a threat. Player seems to be going the same way as well. Both the healers are down, and Isaac follows. Only three players left to try and win this fight out, but they certainly will not. The first objective goes to Drexel. That starts off as a flank from Optimal Shot and uh, CB, who it, it ends up being a three on one uh, against Love is Rage, right? The Wrecking Ball, the Mercy, and the Farah all putting damage um, onto uh, their opposition. See the uh, uh, flexibility perhaps not being exactly as necessary as NYU makes a switch. Bonesaw going over to the Sigma this time. And uh, Isaac over to the Diva. So a lot of uh, uh, denial in terms of uh, damage throughput from the tanks. But perhaps not as much engagement. Both are going to go over to the uh, to the wrecking ball. So there's where that flexibility comes in a little un, uh, a little unwieldy. They have to play uh, musical tanks. Oh, Swift unable to escape so close to that bad, but it would have only delayed the inevitable another death. Now NYU has to figure out what to do. They're all backing up. They're looking for that regroup. They're way spread up at this point. Yeah, there's the. Uh... Uh, Valkyrie as well, so a lot more healing, a lot more maneuverability, and a lot of check marks too for the offense. Uh, Strexel just has moved this cart all the way through the, the second phase pretty quickly. Saw in the back line going for that. Here comes the transcendence. It seems to be absolute chaos. Dropping down, attempting to stop the resurrection. They will kill CB, but as control is back into play. Here comes the self destruct. It doesn't find any value in that one, and it seems that. This is still a standstill fight. A bit of a stalemate, but with that, with Bonesaw going down, this might open things up. Ooh, almost in one clip from uh, Love is Rage. They're not able to get the elimination quite in time. Stays alive, though, as the heal is there from Eeyore. And on the back foot yet again is New York University. Oh, yeah. Optimal shot is going in for the kills. Looking to clean them up. And Love is Rage almost gets away, but they will be clipped off by Wolgar. Swift, however, does manage to take down their counterpart as they are finding way too much aggression. No, Swift wants to go for the pulse bomb, but it's eaten. Here's the rocket barrage. Removes Bonesaw and Isaac from the fight. A pile driver to top it all up. NYU falls again. And the second objective, Drexel is all over this map. Yeah, Drexel has woken up, it seems. This is now 440 here on the third phase as they're in control of this uh, map so far. Some more switches as Swift and Love is Rage turn, take turns on their hit scan counterparts. And uh, now this is the fight where ultimates are in play for NYU. So this is where they're looking to try and make a statement on the defense event. Isaac, with that self-destruct be able to cause some havoc, cause some destruction. This is all a bit of a poke maneuver. Wait a minute, jumping into the air, optimal shot actually gets hit out of the sky by Bonesaw. There is Claire, ready to clean up the pieces, make sure the team is safe, as Drexel has to back off for the first time. That was a little flashy for Bonesaw and Isaac. Uh, both of them flying through, using their mobility options to get the final blow on uh, the Farah Mercy, right? The uh, Grappling hook from the Wrecking Ball and obviously the fly from the Diva. So NYU, uh, you know, stabilized for the moment, but it, they're not out of the woods yet as there is still a lot of time left on the block here. And Drexel 
Trying to isolate out Bone Saw. Optimal Shot not able to get the final blow. Uh, that Prediction Rocket does enough damage to give Peanut the Body Shot boost from uh, the Mercy to get the elimination. From the high side, it is going to be Drexel finding some serious damage. They're lo losing their tanks, almost about to lose both of them. The minefield keeps Bonesaw in this fight for a little bit longer. Optimal Shot, however, turns their attention back to the spawn, and they can keep their bodies on the payload. And this should be a potential win here, but it's always going to be a stall out here from NYU. They're sending out the tanks. They're sending out the spammers to keep them in the fight. Spin to win out here from Bonesaw. And suddenly, Drexel is starting to feel some of the heat. This is still a pretty disastrous thing, though. No support ultimates used. They have to use both on the minefield in that last fight. And with the superior respawns and Claire's well-timed transcendence, they've returned back with a vengeance to get this elimination. And they're going to get the staggering as well. Credit to Bonesaw, who set the table for this particular fight win by setting up the minefield in that small uh, room, in the mega pack room on the left-hand side from the defender's perspective. Um, not only does that minefield deal a ton of damage, it forces both support ultimates out and uh, New York are able to walk back in again with those superior respawns. Um, that is what we call cyberbullying, by the way, oh on Jeff Goldblum. God. That's a whole <laughs> 45 seconds taken away just by getting the stagger on the D.Va. And there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to jump either. No one's attacking the D.Va. The Zen was getting healed. <laughs> there's no way that they could actually win this one out. They were actually swapping over to the Ana. Something I wanted to see earlier in this map, but now we will finally get it. Pest Control being joined by Optimal Shot. I'm excited to see what the Sombra can bring to the play. Maybe it has to wait for a little while. Getting in the back line could be good. Here comes the hack over onto Isaac. Isaac can't bring up the defense matrix, but really all the damage is coming over from the side of NYU. Yeah, Wolgar gonna get the minefield up, but needs to stay alive. And they won't. Bonesaw hunts it down. Pest Control not able to support in time. And New York University, though, running out of players, stabilized for the moment. Pest Control grasping at straws, looking oh, what for a sleep. anything, and it's going to be a sleep. <laughs> you know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen after that one. I like, it felt like a moment frozen in time, Lafon. Three players, three, two, one, and Pest Control is dead. So, um, now, I mean, you're looking at Optimal Shot, who's trying to hunt down for perhaps an elimination in the back line, trying to get through. This is a good change from ER, by the way, going over to the break. They need that stun uh, against, well, I mean, three players, really. Um, four if you count the D.Va. This is a, a, a big read to play the defensive end uh, against the Ana, especially. Ooh, if Optimal Shot gets caught right now, I'm sure the Brig will be a misery to deal with. Oh, and there it is. Eeyore turns around, but they will finally have the support. It's Wolgar there to keep him alive, and that's three down for NYU. Yeah, this is looking like this has become the end as Isaac stays alive for the moment. They don't have the self-destruct as they had to use it there at the, to remac. And uh, I mean, 30 seconds left on the clock. I don't see, I don't foresee a fight win, but more time perhaps removed from the objective. It may very well be possible, but the EMP from Optimal Shot says absolutely not. Isaac goes down along with the self-destruction. It will be Drexel taking the objective with 19 seconds to spare. A great stall for NYU. Again, that's another four minutes uh, taken, uh, four minutes plus taken off the objective. Remember, they entered into third phase with 441. So uh, a lot of time it was eked away there. And granted, it is third Dorado, which is very hard to capture. But still, uh, excellent team play from New York University with the fact that they were essentially removed from the first two objectives without any uh, contest. That was a very swift first half of the map. So making it up in spades on third. And now, I mean, they have to complete the map, but um, their offense has never been in question. It really has been their defense. And so far, NYU have looked significantly improved here defensively. Ready for battle. Yeah, that's what we were, or at least that's what I was discussing. That's what an issue was that I saw from their previous ones, and they're improving. Absolutely. Drexel has had some good moments, as we discussed. It was the, the first two objectives. They actually got almost all the way to the end, but were seemingly unable to finish it out. The same story happened over on King's Row. They were stalled out again by NYU. They have to find superior strength here. They have to lock it down. I think within the first two objectives is where they really need to shine. Yeah. Um, here's a little bit more opportunity for Optimal Shot on the Farah, by the way. There's a lot more vertical cover on Dorado's defensive side um, than some of the other looks we've seen from the Farah. And so Optimal Shot needs to be a big difference maker here, right, um, in, in that defensive end. Isaac was going for a hook, doesn't find anything, so over to the Diva. They go. And, uh, 
I mean, no harm, no foul, right? I mean, I'm always a hog fan, so even if it's for one hook, I will be satisfied. Now optimal shot. Finding a lot of damage, 40% up toward that ultimate charge and counting. That's what I'm talking about, the vertical cover, right? Even as players try and focus on the fire, they just can't see him long enough. Here comes Isaac going into the jump point. That will be two going down here for N or for Drexel as they are being destroyed in the close quarters. There's nowhere for Jeff Goldblum to go and the asset denial of that health pack steal from Bonesaw is just disrespectful. That was a commanding fight from NYU. Even with Optimal Shot putting a ton of damage, they're able to, uh, NYU rather, is able to sustain. And then the cl Collapse and Conquer uh, just right there. Isolate a particular target, in that case, the Zen and the Sigma. Um, and Isaac doing a ton of work in the top end of that fight as well. As the reset comes in, Drexel trying their best to get a fight win. Well, this Rage, oh, almost gets the Pulse Bomb. It won't be enough. Optimal Shot needs to earn this Rocket Barrage soon. They have to get on the objective. There it is, a 0 .05 meter contest, but they're too close for comfort. They have to throw their bodies away, and it is thrown away, as NYU have way too much control in this fight. Yeah, only the tanks left alive, and even then, that is a passing thought, as uh, both will fall as well. Drexel trying to make this last ditch, or this uh, last second adaptation, CB over to the, uh, to the Brigetta as well. Optimal shot off the para. And uh, this th this feels a little bit panicked from Drexel in this moment. It feels like um, trying to hunt for a solution that just isn't uh, uh, coming at this point. Here comes the minefield. It will stop some players in the top section. Optimal shot now with that echo. It does remove Bonesaw from play, which is actually more a very critical play. Bonesaw has been a constant threat, a constant harassment. They also need to worry about this sideline here. It's Love is Rage. If you can get the tracking on, it could be good. But no, the recall is there. And they do escape to return to their team. Yeah, the one thing here is that Drexel needs to put a little bit more pressure or enable has control for more pressure because it's going to be a lot harder for Love is Rage to get healed from the... Uh, uh, Zen Mercy combo than the Brig Zen. So, something to keep an eye out on in the duel, especially between the two tracers. Swift feels a little bit of pressure, but they do have that pocket coming out from Eeyore. She's doing a good job of keeping the team safe. Now, back it up. Here comes the transcendence from Claire. No one will face any damage, but in the back line, it is Bonesaw. And now, from the side, everyone's got to worry about the flanks, but the win against Pest Control will be huge. It's going to be massive as there's no one there in the back line to stop this push. There's the Bob, too, just to get some more space. And Bonesaw, with that Resurrect, means they're back in play. Transcendence committed, and even after all that, Wolgar is not at full HP, so this has become a very scattered second-point defense. Optimal shot there to keep Bonesaw at bay, but Bonesaw with another grappling hook kill. They are too clean with this hero. That is going to be a second-point capture. Uh, barring an absolute miracle and it's just not coming no one can contest there's that objective captured and they're going to continue the cleanup crew they're going to get through this first half of third with uh more percentage gained as it's going to be a full reset as the tracer tries to run back into spawn one saw sensing that this would be an over commitment they do back off return to the objective there has been just so much power coming out of nyu in this second half this is uh, perhaps uh, Drexler is looking for a mirror of what happened on their offense because with four minutes plus in the time bank as they capture a third, they need to try and take a lot of time off the clock though, Los. And uh, I mean, this is where it has to begin, especially with a with a gravitic flux and a rally online. Looking for pest control here to find one target. Almost is able to remove Pina from play, but that won't be the case. Now they have the support, but it's Bonesaw who removes anyone else out of this fight constantly chasing Wolger, but it won't be a winning fight they have to get back onto the objective here comes a pulse bomb it might find a kill but it won't be good the heals out from eeyore are just too strong they aren't able to lock down a single player and finish an action yeah a really really smart play there just staying alive means that this is going to be a full it's not going to need to be a full reset and nyu can return to the offense very swiftly um, and I mean, here, you've got the Bob to the back line at Peanut, not quite to the transcendence yet. There it is. You don't want to have to use it against a, you know, a low ground uh, opportunity. You want this cart to be a little bit further uh, forward before you try to attack. Good pickoff. Player's going to go down. The Resurrect is in time. 
Oh, being locked down and knocked around inside the minefield, but they will be okay because Claire's here with the Transcendence to knock it and clear the field to fight in. Back on the back foot is Drexel University with three players down. They will commit the Transcendence. Peanut looking to keep anyone that can alive, but no one will stay safe. No one is safe from NYU's aggression. Still, Time Bank is ticking down, and Drexel will have a true fight left. Uh, you're going to need a, a hero play here. Someone to contest. You need the Pulse Bomb. And this Gravitic Flux is going to have to pull magic out because New York University is doing a great job of just forcing the issue. Do have that self-destruction on Isaac. I'm assuming they're going to send it up to the sky. But can anyone get behind the barrier? It won't find anyone. But you got to worry about other players. you got to worry about Swift and Bonesaw who are always finding those kills in the back line. It will be the Gravitic Flux. Coming from Jeff Goldblum, but it won't matter much because Claire is back into the fight as quickly as you lost her. Here comes the Pulse Bomb Stick, but it doesn't do much. It only demex Isaac Pest Control looking for anything, grasping at straws, grasping at shots, but none of them will connect. It's a consistent stall out here from Drexel, and they will not go down without a fight. But Walgar goes down. They don't have too many tanks in play. Shooting from the bottom, Isaac just looking to get back into the back. They're doing enough damage with the Baby Diva. This is still not going uh, uh, perfectly for NYU, though. They lose a couple of members, and this is now returned to a possibility for the contest to continue longer. NYU running out of players. Here comes Bob, though, to bring some support. They will knock up Wolgar into the air along with the Discord Orb. That does not spell anything but doom for that player. Here comes Jeff Goldblum. They were looking for the remake, but they couldn't find it. Bob removes optimal shot, and that's another one going down for Bob. There's three down here for Drexel, but the Valkyries pop by E, or she's keeping everyone doing damage flying in the sky. It is just a war of attrition, and Drexel is looking for the spawns. They're looking for the ability to get back into the fight. The self-destruct goes wide. The remake does a little bit of damage with Jeff Goldblum and the crew. They're here to fight. Here's another minefield and another transcendence out of Claire. This fight won't stop. Yeah, with Isaac getting DMX yet again, there's the duplicate. Optimal Shot is back, keeping things in tow long enough. The duplicate will expire, so too will the eliminations, and this should finally be it. NYU try, and for the moment, they get it through a 12-second difference at the very end, Los. And Drexel fighting, kicking and screaming to bring that one back. That was incredibly close for NYU. Yeah, that was... That was very close to being sub one minute, sub 60 seconds. It was a similar story that we saw when NYU was on the defense. A very hard fought tooth and nail fight at the bitter end for that contest. A stall for it all. And they only walk out with an additional 12 seconds here for New York University. But what are they going to be able to do in terms of that defense here? Ready. This is, uh, I mean, critical. This is absolutely critical for, for Drexel University. If they cannot get this first objective, um, then there is going to be a real chance that they get 0-3'd here. Um, again, we saw how Drexel University opened up the first point. Um, it was by sending Optimal Shot and company on the flank and, you know, getting behind the, uh, the defenses of New York University. I don't see that being the opening that uh, Drexel will find this time around, right? I feel like New York is going to have a little bit more um, uh, attention paid to their uh, to their backline this time. That's a lesson they won't soon forget, Lafon. I'm sure of that. I'm interested to see a cool shot back on Vara. Is that going to be an issue for Swift to shoot out of the sky, especially with that pharmacy? That was a good concussive blast, by the way, to put uh, Bonesaw on the low ground. So now the shield is not nearly as efficient. You can see the long rotation that Bonesaw has to take. Gonna play in choke by himself. But uh, this is gonna give Optimal Shot the opportunity to get to do a little bit more damage. Well, Bonesaw is really feeling the pressure now. They do have the heals, so they will remain safe for the moment. Getting back with their squad. Using the halt to put a few players together. That might be the end of CB, but they will be safe now. But the fight is taken to them. It's Volgar jumping right into their faces and almost losing their life for it. Jeff Goldblum there for some support, but we have Love is Rage on the back line. It will be noticed. They have to get away. They have to return to this fight, and maybe they can beat out their counterpart of Pest Control, but it seems that Drexel is starting things off, taking down three of those players. What will be turned back into Swift Resurrected, but no, it's not going to be good. Drexel University is so in the faces of NYU. And this is going to be the first point turned over to Drexel University as a result. The overtime is in effect. The spawn on Bonesaw will take way too long for a true reset here on to second. 
Um, NYU gonna change up their composition slightly. I think we're gonna go back to that Wrecking Ball comp with the D.Va. Um, yeah, Bonesaw goes over. Love is Rage touches the objective, but Force to Recall very swiftly. There's that point. Uh, again, Overtime will tick away very quickly, so somebody needs to stay on the objective to prevent that from being the case. A lot more shots from Optimal Shot, but none of them are quite as optimal as the namesake. They're still looking for that first ultimate. We do have a few check marks on the side of Drexel, though. Looking for that pickup. The cart has moved pretty far forward. There's a great clear from the high ground. Okay, Volgar here's, will knock it out. Here's Volgar starting things off. They have the minefield in play, and it forces them to move away from the amplification matrix. But Love is Rage with a massive double in the pulse bomb. Swift comes back for the fight with a great resurrection out from NYU. And this should be a good moment. The, the nano boosted Mercy. Oh no, they must have been grabbing at straws, or maybe it was just a misclick. CB is not the one you want to bring for that damage of CB, and both the healers go down. However, the fight is still on. Both the tanks from Drexel are here to stay. They are putting in some serious damage. Followed up with Optimal Shot. They might be able to utilize their Rocket Barrage before being sniped out of the sky. A Swift has such a great off angle. Yeah, I don't think anyone can test Swift, so this is going to be a firing range for the Ash. Coming back is the Diva. That might cost them their mech. And overtime still continues. The cart has not moved very far forward. This is going to be a soft reset as the spawns walk back in. Desperation now from both teams. You have a change. Will be this amplification matrix to start it off. But once again, Drexel University is jumping in the back line looking for it. Optimal Shot can't get the great usage of the Rocket Barrage. And now following it up, it will be a minefield over there by both Wrecking Balls from either side, making that objective way more dangerous than it has to be Drexel University. They will be knocked off if Wolgar gets killed at the moment. This should be the end of this round. That is halfway through second though as a elimination reminder. This is how far New York University has to get. And with only a minute 12 on the clock, that is a very tall order. Still, that is impressive stuff. The Nano Boost on the Mercy ends up working up tremendously. It gives the Mercy survivability so they don't have to worry about healing. And uh, that allows Peanut just to keep the Ana uh, a little bit longer to focus on the front line. It's a, it's, it's a gamble, but a gamble that worked out to give Drexel more progress. And now this map is looking very winnable for Drexel University. You know, I didn't believe in the play, Lafon. I did not believe in it. I thought it was a misclick. But whether it was a gamble, whether it was a misclick, they took that opportunity and they found even more distance out of it. I was surprised that Drexel was able to hold on after that fight. I thought that was going to be it. I thought NYU had eliminated them completely, especially with the off angle that we saw out of Swift. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I was I was worried that uh, that Jeff Goldblum chasing down the uh, Ash was a mistake. We saw the dynamite used. We saw how low Jeff Goldblum was. But um, in, in the end, uh, just calculated uh, aggression from Drexel gives themselves their best opportunity to max victory um, in this series so far, as uh, it seems we may, in fact, have a series on our hands. Absolutely. It'll only take just a few fights, maybe, maybe two is all it will take. Drexel to win this one. They just have to win to optimal shot back here with the Somra. I'm excited for this one. There's plenty of opportunity like, for this to win. I like this pick a lot more here. You don't have to win. You have to win one fight, really, if you are Drexel. Um, with a minute left on the clock, that is pretty much it. And the Sombra should guarantee you one. And on top of that, it should make uh, Bone Saw's life very difficult. The hack is something that as a wrecking ball disables you completely. And so um, you can see already Love is Rage just trying to survive. Has to pay attention to that Sombra in the back line is grabbing the attention of both Optimal and Wolger. They are missing out on defending the payload. Here's Bonesaw looking to join the party as multiple players are back from that choke from the high ground as Isaac walks this payload through without much resistance at all. But here comes the first one. Optimal Shot does get the hack on the Bonesaw and finishes it off. However, they're looking for another one. Swift has to back off. It will be a resurrection for Bonesaw though. That is a lot of HP back on the field and a lot more disruption as well. So it's a big resurrect for New York University. We are in that final 10 seconds of the time bank and it's gonna have to be perfect from here on out for New York University. Oh, hit with a sleep and a stun immediately following that. Two of the DPS down, Bonesaw dropping in, gets hacked before the pile drive can even find the damage they're looking for. Now Eeyore, she's trying to keep the players healed, but no one is there on the objective of self-destruct, a minefield. Everything in the kitchen sink is used to keep NYU off of this objective, and it's going to work. 
they have no chance of getting on and making that contest in Drexel University. Woo-wee! They're winning. It's 2-1. This ain't a sweep today. We still have maps to go and optimal shot. It's not really the play. It's in fact the utility that comes in clutch there at the very end as the Sombra makes a big difference, I think, in the tail end of that. This, of course, is the highlight from the uh, Clown Fiesta of a final fight on third um, as NYU were able to put it home. But no, it is in fact the fact that um, Again, optimal shot, That just setting up that flank with Afara on first. The hero of the map on that first point, I think, for Drexel University as they claw themselves a map in their favor. It's not done for them yet. They still need to be perfect from now till the end of the series if they want a chance at victory. 2-1 is the scoreline as NYU is still in the lead. Yeah, I am happy to see Drexel come through and find success over on Dorado. I wanted this to be a competitive series, and it's certainly what we've got on our hands. A yeah. Great return of fire, great return of aggression or defense, because we had seen NYU have too much control, too much aggression, always having a huge time bank toward the end and losing it uh, or getting it whittled down a bit. But this time, they held it down in the beginning, in the opening sequences. They didn't need to go for a stall. They didn't need to go for that uh, third objective fight. They locked it down early, and it, it has to come down to a great pick off of Bonesaw using that hack to stop the back line flanks. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of good adaptation uh, midway through by, by Drexel to give themselves their first map again. Not out of the woods yet, though. Still uh, a lot on the table here as NYU tries to close this series out. Not a doubt. So I'm excited to see what NYU's pick of map will be and what are they looking to do? Will it be? I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know, LaFon. What do you what do you think it's going to be? But you know what? We can think all we want because it's going to take a little bit of time for both these teams to think about it. Take some time, a little bit of water, bathroom break. We're going to head to a break ourselves. So don't go anywhere, folks. Nay, Star League Overwatch is going to be right back. Welcome back to Nay Star League Overwatch. We got three maps down here in our first series. It's NYU versus Drexel. Drexel keeping themselves alive back in Dorado to push us to a map four, and they're not done yet. There still is that potential reverse sweep, but hey, anything can happen here in Nay Star League. Of course, as always, I'm low, still joined by Lafon. Lafon, how are we how are we feeling going into map four? Uh, pretty good, actually, because I think this map, this this series has been a study in contrast a lot of the time. Where Drexel has had advantage, it's been close. Um, where NYU's had advantage, it hasn't been. Except, I think, at the very end of Dorado, right? That, that, that third phase. So, um, definitely, I think if NYU can get off to a hot start early on this fourth map, then um, they may end up just taking it all here. But Drexel is not out of it yet by any stretch, especially as showcased in the very end of Dorado. Yeah, one thing that I harped upon, that we both harped upon, was a bit of a lack of team-focused team play that I noticed in King's Row. That wasn't present over in Dorado. They were yeah. all working together as a unit. They were all in conjunction, and that synergy is exactly how they earned that first map. So let's see if they can keep it together as we're going over to Volskaya Industries. We haven't seen this map in quite some time. <laughs> It's nice to uh, it's nice to have not a 3-0 in the Nace Star League, right? It's been a it's been a long run for me and you, Los, where that's been a thing. So more adaptation. I will say that we expect to see the wrecking ball find a lot more uh, play here on this first phase, especially of Volskaya. And so it's not a surprise to me that that's what Wolgar is rolling out on. This dive composition is so strong, and I really like to see that optimal shots on the Sombra get more value early out of the hack, out of the EMP, and kind of go from there. Um, New York University, though, they do have a point of the spear style execute or composition here as you've got the Winston Zarya. They're going to have that clear uh, uh, sort of escalated dive, um, whereas Drexel will have a little bit more uh, adaptability in the mid fight uh, with the Tracer and the Wrecking Ball. And it started things off with Love is Rage in the side room looking for that 1v1 onto pest control. But actually, they're breaking through the first choke point and splitting it up. Two players on the right, we do have Isaac on the back line. Actually, a hack over on the bone saw makes them have to back up for a little bit. They will go in as a unit. Here's the bubble to keep them safe for optimal shots. Looking for a hack, looking for a new angle in the back line. They're just keeping themselves safe now. That hack delayed the fight um, because you can see that obviously Bonesaw cannot leap to the high ground without the jump. So there it is going to be now. Love is Rage taken down though as uh, a big pickoff from Peter. 
were they were looking for. They wanted to get that flank, but they got killed themselves. Bonesaw might be able to finish this one off. And yes, in conjunction with Swift, they are taking down the high line players, both the healers down, and not much left to defend this first point. Yeah, and the spawns are obviously going to favor the offense in this particular one. And even with that, it's still remarkable, though. Keeping it in contestation is pass control with an elimination, but that is the end of this first point defense. Um, not much more than that will be gained as there's still four players left alive and uh, a lot of the damage dealers online as well. Drexel University heads to the second phase now to defend and they've got the EMP. It's going to be uh, a big difference maker. It has to be a big difference maker to prevent the snowball. Nano boost onto Bone Saw to open things up and Pulse Bomb from Love is Rage could spell the end of the second phase defense. Love is Rage looking for that back line. Yeah, the double jump into the back. Just a little bit of harassment though. Nothing committed just yet. That would be very bold. So they're looking for a, a further big setup. Wondering it's gonna start here with Bone Saw. There it is. It's the Nano Monkey they're jumping into the back line. Optimal shot. Actually, the do they bring back the pulse bomb to take out Peanut? I don't know what it was, but Love is Rage going huge now. Taking three, and that will be four down here for Drexel. I actually think it was the other way around. I think the pulse ball was like the Zen and Optimal Shot recalled into it. Now the stall tactics are in full play. Optimal Shot over to the Doomfist, trying desperately for a pick off. Running out of space. There's the Transcendence to keep everyone alive, but the eliminations are coming through for NYU. Oh, and actually a great punch against Claire. They're looking for another one. Both healers are down here for NYU. And the spawns are good. Bulgar rolling back into action. Spin to win. They knock into a few tanks. But this is potential for the minefield to just keep them off. Yeah, trying to get the duplicate diva away from the back line. The pulse bomb will be enough. There's the DMAC and the undo of the duplicate. And New York University, they are not going to walk away with the full point capture. There's the reset coming in. And critically, Wolkar still has the minefield, did not see the need to use it. And so Drexel has an opportunity to stabilize into this next fight. Isaac has the Graviton. Should be interesting to see how they utilize it, though. They do have all this rage with the pulse to combine it. Now they're just doing a bit of skirmishing. No one's committing until Bonesaw just peeks their face into the objective, misses the jump, but here's the or the Graviton, and nothing really to follow it up. There is the Pulse Bomb. That's what we were looking for, but they can't capitalize on it. There's too many mines on the objective for them to actually push in. Oh yeah, that's a big play from Wulgar. They're going to buy time for the response to come in. Still, though, the focusing beam is there. Wulgar staying alive, barely. That's control. Move from play with the anti nade. Bonesaw jumping into action again. Gets to the back line. The sleep dart misses. And they should be able to get more kills out of this one. No, the meteor strike. It goes wide. Player here has the nano boost. And it's going to have so much damage. So many players are going down for Drexel. And it's a continuation of the stall. But no one from NYU is actually dying. Yeah, this is uh, still, uh, still a possibility to keep this one in favor. There's the focusing beam onto Wulgar. Won't get away in this one as they have to stay on the objective. A last minute attempt at the stall. And with the Primal Rage to clear the point, this should be NYU completing their capture. It's only a matter of time as the rally is popped as well. They are just throwing their bodies on the point, looking for the chipping of the time clock. They will they'll get it. It'll be a continuation. <laughs> A slow process as it is. No, CB can't dismiss or dash over onto the point quick enough. This will be another victory in the round here for NYU of pretty healthy time bank of two minutes and 26 seconds. Yeah, this is this is a weird instance where um, unlike the King's Row stall, it was still really good from Drexel University. But two minutes 26 is a significant time bank to kind of work against, remember? So um, it, it, it's, it's a case where for NYU now, their defensive posture is, I think, a little bit more comfortable with playing aggressively against Drexel University because you have 226 in the back pocket. Drexel will have to capture first handily and then second handily as well to get a time bank that is significantly advanced from 226. So... Um, a lot here against to be said for Drexel University having to play um, really, really strong, uh, coherent Overwatch to try and equalize. But again, they are down 2 1. So New York University will be at match point for the remainder of the series. And um, that is something that's also hanging over Drexel University. Well, in this situation, 
can you even afford to play too conservative or too careful? You have to throw everything you've got, everything you can do, because if you lose, you will be out of the series. There's no room for mistakes or room for being, you know, questioning your strategies. You just have to go balls to the wall and throw everything you got at NYU. And I, I want to see what they got here at Volskaya. I'm interested to see how New York Heroes plays the shield comp. Orisa Bonesaw will likely re retreat to that mega health pack room um, if they get too low. Um, and even then, uh, seeding ground here uh, uh, early, you can see playing more uh, passively is NYU's big sleep guard the player. Won't be able to be punished. Uh, oh. But it is actually Swift who gets taken out. Wow, not what we were expecting, but it's a pleasant move here for Drexel as they immediately take control of that high ground, even leaving Love is Rage in the back line, but maybe they're going back in for a fight. So many players in such critical state of condition. Optimal shot will be the first one to fall here from Drexel. The fight isn't even getting started yet. Let's see Wolgar on the sideline. Might be able to get things uh, popping. Well, they are getting shot from the back as well. Yeah, Swift coming back on the soldier is actually the one who's going to put a little bit more hurt in the dirt. Quite literally, as pest control taken out with a well-timed helix and headshot. And uh, I guess that elimination works out poorly for Drexel University. Lovis Rage goes for the pulse bomb, gets stunned and taken out with their own utility. But uh, they should be back before this fight starts or really gets heavy. So New York University are not quite out of things yet. Looking for something actually, the Nano goes over to Optimal Shot. They remove the Immortality Field from play. Claire, the first one to take the hit. They have to capitalize on that one. Might have ran out, but the damage is still coming through from Optimal, but they lose. They get too close over to Swift and feel the wrath of that Helix. Jeff Goldblum not finding the damage because the shield coming from Bonesaw is too strong. They can't break through. And Swift right now is just finding all the kills they need. A Pulse Bomb takes out Bonesaw, but they're still not out of this yet. Only one down for NYU, one down for Drexel. They're looking to turn the tides and Tactical Visor being put into play. Let's see how many kills can be gotten. It's defended from the defense matrix. No damage really coming through from this one, and it is an unfortunate ultimate. However, the fight is not over just yet. Optimal Jaw taken out with the call, Max. So this has gone from bad to worse. New York University putting on a clinic here as they stabilize in the final moments. Wulgar, the last one left alive, will be forced to retreat and Los. New York University, it's scrappy, it's ugly, but they managed to do it as they complete the hold for the moment. A minute 40 left on the clock, and you're looking at this next fight, wondering what's the opening opportunity? The check marks really haven't, you know, grown quite as heavily as you'd like for Drexel University in New York. NYU, they have the supercharger, they have the Ant Matrix. A lot of damage on the table here now for the defense to stymie the opposition. Ooh, a stick, but it isn't good. It does get a bit of damage onto Jeff Goldblum, but they're not done yet. Wolgar in the back line. They're looking to use that minefield, but how can it be put into play? How can they get onto the objective? How can they bring everyone together? It seems that they're taking their time. They only have a minute left. They have to make a move at this moment. There's a self-destruct to open things up, but it's Wolgar down first. Rage still dueling pest control in the back line, actually starting things off. It's Eeyore who continues to bring the pain, but CB and Jeff Goldblum are actually in the back line. A huge pulse bomb from pest control. They finally find the value. Claire looking to do it all with that amplification matrix, but they're all by themselves. They can't hold this one. Yeah, this is going to be a case of New York University going to have to give up the second phase. Can they get more time off the clock? Claire will be the last one alive, and that won't last much longer. 3.30 left. Drexel University, they don't have a lot of tools to get the snowball started. They're only saving grace that New York doesn't have much in the back pocket either. Claire switching over to the Ana here as she brings more frontline healing. Focused with the ability to get that mana boost online. Really, you're hoping for this rally, the sustain, the ability to be uh, in the fight longer as the only opportunity here for Drexel. It activates and they're underway. Here it comes, but no one is able to break through. Optimal Shot is always in the front line, and that's a bit of an issue, but they win out this one with good Sticky Bomb placement. Love is Rage looking for the Pulse Bomb, but it goes off the ledge. G or CB there almost removes Love is Rage from the back line. Wolgar here to deal some damage and get some control, get some possession of the objective, but it won't happen. Eeyore coming back and swinging with their own rally and being forced beaten out of the point, beaten out of the factory. Drexel University, they're on their back foot, can't do anything about it. Yes, 
if ER will go down here, but the damage has already been done. And that is going to mean that New York University will have the superior time bank here at the end of Full Sky Industries. That's a nano boost onto Optimal Shot, but there's no support. No one can, is there to back them up. Pulse Bomb is going to take down one, but it's traded swiftly. Optimal Shot always being taken down first by NYU. Pest Control in the back line faces the Wrath of a boosted Doomfist, and Walgard can't get out of there in time. Maybe they will be able to survive. Jeff Goldblum will be another one added to the kill list. This is not working out here for Drexel. They need a new strategy. And this is now where panic is going to set in because Drexel University, if they want an opportunity to reapproach Volskaya well, Industries, will need to capture with time remaining. New York University are in just time, take time off the clock. That's what you have to do with this phase. And uh, Love is Rage, Pokey in the back line, doing a fantastic job of it, uh, just slowing t uh, things down here. In a better duo than NYU and stalling the clock on the last objective. Love is Rage does get the Pulse Bomb, but if the shield will be up, nobody goes down. Does not have that effect. Here comes Optimal Shot doing the duplication over onto the Diva. They might not be able to find any kills, but it should be enough to build up into a self-destruct. They have almost the percentage they need. The Brawl continues. The Brawl fights, but they actually aren't able to get it done before being knocked out. They don't find a kill. Actually, onto the opposing Diva. Isaac is removed, and now so are three people down for NYU. This could be the time it turns. This should be the end of the objective, unless there's a massive stall coming back from NYU. 50 seconds. Who's the one going to touch first? It's Eeyore who gets there on the objective. It's followed up by the Wrecking Ball. Time is of the essence here. Yeah, sub 60 seconds. There is the spin to win. Stall for it all on the ball, but the ball is gone. Now it's over to the monkey. Bone saw jumping around, keeping themselves in the air, back into contesting, but shot out of the sky like a clay pigeon. They won't be able to have that much efficacy, but it keeps running down. There is always an extra player who makes their way onto the site. As, the one, as soon as you kill one, two more appear like a Hydra. 20 seconds left. Is there anyone else who gets to the objective? 17, 15 seconds here, Los. Oh my God, Bonesaw back in it again. Finally, they go down. Finally, Drexel University can breathe a sigh of relief. They have one. They have a minute in the time bank, but they still are down severely in that. By three minutes and 14 seconds to one minute. That isn't looking too good. It is a perfect fight that they need. We've seen this story before, though. Unlike Dorado, New York University have given themselves a buffer zone to work with. And this is now Drexel University fighting for their very lives here in this series. A minute to get progress on first. It's, it's, it's a tough ask, Los. It's a tough ask indeed. And New York University, they were able to stabilize for such a long time on their first objective. They're going back to what worked. Eurisa, time off the clock is essential. And we'll see how well they're able to do it. An optimal shot as well. Reprising the role of Farah. I think it will be a good move because there have been so many times in the previous round where on the Echo, optimal shot got way too close to the enemy. Even enough to get killed by Swift shooting a, a helix at the ground with the remake coming from Isaac, it, it's just way too close for your damage dealer to be, especially when they thrive at a good range. Five, four, three, it starts now. One, Clock will six, tick six, down six, to six, one. Six, Attack commences. Six, Less than a minute on it as well. And NYU hoping to stymie the approach. Optimal shot in the Farah. Started the series off with it, trying to end it right here. Swift. Back on the 76. Good for the damage. But it shouldn't be a rough day. Probable shot to be able to survive with that player in play. Swift on the back line. Just pointing in some damage, pumping it up. They will play their lives. Very conservative on the side of NYU. Yeah, 30 seconds. Again, it's all about eking time off the clock. That's a big concussive nade. And there's the elimination. Starting things off. That's exactly what you need. Remove a healer from play. It's only Claire there to give sustain for the rest of the squad. With 15 seconds left, you need to get on the objective. It's a massive flank, but they have nothing to show for it besides one elimination. That won't be enough. Isaac looking to launch them out of the sky. Optimal shot does go down. Isaac, not even worse for wear. Here comes a resurrection, but it's the mortality field busted out by NYU a bit early. This should be a signal for them to be able to move forward, find the eliminations they need. Peanut doesn't have the defense. He will be removed. Love is rage getting the shots. They have the pulse bomb if they need it. 
There's the Ant Matrix for the damage throughput. Who's going to stay alive? Who's going to be the hero for the Drexel Dragons? There's no one left in play. And with that, the overtime will tick away. And Drexel University's hopes with it as they now play for the draw to keep themselves for a map number five. New York University sitting at match point 314 available for one third of the objective. It's running out. Time is of the essence and it has disappeared. New York University looking to close things out here and now big focus on getting into the back line which while the flank was successful in them getting the kill onto i believe eeyore it didn't amount to much in the long run most of the tanks all the all the tanks all the damage dealers all the dps they were fine they were safe it was a good intention but when you only have a minute on the clock in overtime you gotta get onto that objective you gotta take the fight to nyu yeah, and credit to NYU, by the way. Optimal Shot gets eliminated as the Farah trying to go in, and they see um, CB go for the Resurrect. And rather than Isaac trying to, you know, go back and um, put pressure on, on the Resurrect, instead turns to the front line. There's one healer down, so they're able to deal so much more damage. And with Peanut, you know, working overtime, um, New York University, their calls, their focus calls are in impeccable. Um, and, and give themselves that advantage. Even with Optimal Shot returning, the eliminations were there. And all of a sudden, New York University looking really strong here. Optimal Shot back on the Sombra. Should be good. They have found clutch plays in the past, like we saw on Dorado. And they reprise that role. Things starting off quite nicely. A little bit of a skirmish here. Bone Saw leaves the charge to the right side of the room, and they will engage with Jeff Goldblum. That defense matrix won't help you now. A bubble to keep them safe as well as they drop down onto the D.Va, looking for that d mechan Most of the players are backing off now, dancing around. They have high ground control already. Yeah, and I mean, here's the problem. Not only do they have high ground control, but they've zoned out um, the supports from Drexel University. Setting up for the dive onto the Zen is going to be a lot easier from this position, especially from high ground to low ground. Big pick off, optimal shots out early. Maybe pest control as well. Love his rage. Continuing to look for those frags, but Jeff Goldblum does have a bit of resistance in them, but they will be removed from the mech soon. But actually, Peanut coming through, taking down some of the tank line. Peanut coming big, finding two. And that is two down there for NYU. And make it Peanut more. Peanut with three. Whoa. Another one, another one. Oh my goodness, Peanut just kept everyone in this one. Eeyore will be eliminated. And with that, Peanut plays the heroic support at the very end, rightly on fire. As New York University, they lose a minute and 14 from their time bank. No percentage gained either. Again, it's that first third. So the opportunity for the draw is still in play. Love is rage. Poked out. Forced to recall early. And New York University are getting pestered as they try and walk in here. We know Wolgar looking for the minefield and all that spam onto Tracer. It'll be huge off the wall shot. They got to watch out. I don't know if they have a translocation. No, it won't be good. That's two down for NYU. Make it three. Almost about to be four. They are collapsing against Drexel University. It will be the d -Mech out of Jeff Goldblum and only one there to defend it. It's Wolger. We've seen them stall it out with the Wrecking Ball. But against all these players with the sleep, with the ante, there's nothing they can do. And NYU wins it three to one. And that is just a statement game from NYU as they keep themselves in the hunt for that postseason berth, stating that they might be the team to contest here in, uh, that is the second, playing for that second place in this division. Peanut is, comes in clutch at the very end, but it was not to be, as it is NYU who walk away with the victory, a 3-1. And what a, what a fantastic series was. Woo! I... I am happy to see that resurgence out of Drexel. I'm glad to see the fight in them. They, they truly brought it every single map today. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to NYU winning. Have those team plays, finding players getting caught out like we saw Optimal Shot. Caught in the back line. They didn't have a translocator to move away. It was just a, a pure ball of death coming out of NYU toward the end. And Drexel just couldn't handle it. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, uh, shout out to the 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 entire team of uh, of NYU because they stepped up in a big way. Uh, I mean, part of that was obviously the DPS setting up and, and being able to take the duels and win out the duels, but also the front line. Um, I think setting the pace of the game and really being in control. 
um, of the objective. Even a lot of the times, you know, taking cooldowns away, you know, the sleep dart in certain cases, or the hack, um, or, or the stun, and, and so on and so forth, and staying alive. Uh, a lot of that is part of the reason why that NYU were able to take the victory here. And so, um, as a team, leveling up tremendously to, uh, to earn this 3 1 victory over Drexel. And now the record's heading over to 5 and 1. They are yeah. second place in their conference. Drexel back in a third place, but a respectable position nonetheless. So, I'm expecting this won't be the last we're seeing of these two squads as the season progresses. So, that will be the first match of the night. So don't go anywhere, folks. More Overwatch action here at the Naystar League continues right after this break.